Are you happy with your decision to become a PA? Most definitely. I am actually grateful to be where I am. Um, this is uh, beyond what I had hoped for. I think um, the beauty of practicing in Canada is that you see the profession grow. Even um, from when I was a pre-PA a few years back till now, we have more PAs joining the community and more, P you know, more people interested in pursuing it as a profession. It's, it's something that I'm grateful for to be uh, pra being a practicing PA just a few years after um, deciding on this career path. So hi everyone, I'm Arthi, I'm an emergency medicine physician assistant trained in Canada at the University of Toronto Physician Assistant Program. Since we last spoke, I had actually had spoken to you after you completed one semester in first year at U of T. Uh, so what have you been up to since then? I think that even though it's only been a couple of years, um, lots have happened since then. And uh, I think I was starting my second semester um, during my last interview. And after finishing didactic year, which was that semester, and then semester three, which was throughout the summer, I started clerkship year. Started with a few rotations in the south, and then I actually went up north to do my emergency medicine rotation, and then a family medicine rotation, which also had a touch of uh, internal medicine. And then we had a bit of a break because of the pandemic, and then we got back into rotations, and I got the opportunity to do an elective rotation as well, which I'm grateful for. And that was in orthopedic surgery and sports medicine, which really complemented my background in kinesiology and is a field that I'm, I've always been interested in. After completing uh, clerkship year, I took a few months to work from home. I did a bit of contact tracing and then I started applying to jobs, which was um, a couple of months. So last holiday season was, uh, you know, interviewing for jobs and a lot of job application. Um, and then I started working in January, so about 10, 10 11 months ago. I, I decided to uh, work in emergency medicine, but when I was applying earlier, I kept my options open. So a few months into working as an emergency med PA, I got offered the opportunity to be the academic coordinator for the University of Toronto uh, Physician Assistant Program. I thought it was a great opportunity to give back to the program, but also um, provide student support and course director support, especially being familiar with the curriculum. Um, and I, I really, really enjoy working with the team, the faculty at uh, University of Toronto. So can you tell us a little bit more about what it was like to find a job after graduation? Yeah, so it was definitely a very um, a great learning experience. So there were a lot of job opportunities outside Career Start, which is um, the program that Ontario um, government provides to help the new grads transition into a job. So they cover half of the salary for the first year um, for the southern PAs and then for uh, PAs who work up north in the underserved areas it could also be for the first two years of their practice and uh, the employer would cover the other half of it so um, there were external jobs that were being posted earlier on and then there were also the career start grant positions so the process was everyone had a different um, approach i tried to keep my options open and that was in terms of specialty as well i always knew i wanted to work in ortho but i still kept my options open and applied to family medicine and emergency medicine i found the interview process to be very uh, rewarding because you learn a lot about yourself as you speak about yourself um, to employers and also learn about um, the understanding of the PA role with um, all these different um, supervising docs and different specialties. So after that, um, I did a lot of self-reflection <laughs> to see what specialty would be best for me um, to start off and I landed on in emergency medicine, which funnily enough is not a specialty I thought I would start off in, but I'm very grateful for, um, especially for all the learning I have um, gotten in the last few months. And what drew you specifically to emergency medicine? Yeah, so I thought that um, there were a few points. I thought that um, working in general medicine, especially fresh out of school, will help consolidate my learning that I did in my two years of PA school. I really like the mix of procedural medicine, so the opportunity to do um, suturing, laceration repairs. Um, because I, I always loved ortho, emergency medicine gives you the opportunity to see you know, fractures and casting, as well as um, uh, transitioning their care into like fracture clinics, so the orthopods there. And additionally, I like that um, you get an exposure to different um, 
different physician preferences as well so I work with like more than 50 docs and those are great opportunities to collaborate and provide patient care they always say that um, you know working with PAs and um, in the eMERGE like you have two great minds um, thinking about a patient case instead of just one so I think that's the beauty of um, working collaboratively but also like for me especially as a new grad PA um, I was able to kind of learn from all these different MD colleagues and kind of add to my toolbox in terms of what my preferences are um, in terms of patient care and especially when I present the case and propose different next steps. How is the Department of Emergency Medicine organized at your particular location? Yeah great question so we have um, four major areas so there's a the resuscitation area where the more critical patients are and then there's the acute area and major area and then there's a the rapid assessment zone which is is usually where the PAs are situated so um, in terms of uh, the types of patients in these different respective depart um, areas of the department um, CTAS is kind of what the triage nurse helps us to kind of categorize where these patients go so in resuscitation area you'll see the CTAS 1 patients so patients with heart attack anything that needs the doctor's immediate attention and they need to be monitored and they need to be taken care of right away and then there's the acute and major area where you'll see a lot of the senior patients um, CTAS 2 to 3 I would say is um, usually the average you'd see patients who are are COPD um, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease exacerbation um, or even patients who are query stroke and you want to make sure that um, you assess them um, get the scan and things like that and then in rapid assessment zone you'll see a lot of CTAS 3 to 5 I would say so whether that be something as simple as suture removal which you could even do at triage and send them home or they actually make their way into a rapid assessment zone um, or something like a laceration that requires suturing or something like a broken bone so you would send them to x-ray and then you'll see them in the rapid assessment zone and um, help with casting and the next steps so lots of variety um, CTAS 1 through 5 and then different areas of the department and PAs I would say are usually in the rapid assessment zone and more so especially when doctors get pulled into the recess area or in the acute care area and um, PAs kind of take care of the workload in RAS and then uh, present to the, find the physician eventually and present to them. Can you expand upon what that impact has had on the department and other benefits of adding a PA to the practice or to the eMERGE department has been like? We hear a lot of um, physicians who are thankful for um, PAs being able to do procedures because that's something that um, does take time depending on the um, extent of the laceration or even um, even casting uh, for a patient who has a broken bone that requires a reduction under sedation. So a physician having to manage the sedation aspect as well as the casting or during a night shift where they don't have a PA or in that small window where they don't have PA coverage um, versus a PA actually being there to do the casting and they can kind of share that workload. So in terms of sharing the physician's workload, I think that uh, physicians are grateful and it helps them prioritize seeing the higher acuity cases while we uh, help, help see the, the quick patient visits where we can kind of see them and the doctor checks in at the end and make sure that everything looks good before the patient leaves the department. And from the patient's side, we actually help reduce wait time. So some of these patients can be brought in sooner because we're sharing that workload with the physician. And um, based on the CTAS level and based on which department, area of the department they're going to, um, their, their visit might look different because there's a PA um, in the department versus when there's not a PA and everything kind of falls on the physician and the rest of the team to take care of them. So can you talk about some of the common conditions that you may see that present to the emergency department? Lots of variety in the eMERGE. So I guess if I take a head to toe approach, I can say we see a lot of headaches, um, sore throats and URI, which is upper respiratory infections, especially with COVID. Um, and then chest pain, um, shortness of breath, abdominal pain, and then musculoskeletal pain, which could be anywhere in the body, so shoulder pain, upper extremity pain, or lower extremity pain, whether it's um, the joints, so knee joint, hip pain, um, ankle pain, foot pain, so many different varieties, or um, back pain is a very common one, whether it's something acute or something that they've been dealing with for a long time. And then, um, branching off from this the different differential diagnoses to consider you would want to rule out the the scary ones in the eMERGE so for chest pain you want to rule out myocardial infarction which is a heart attack pulmonary embolism 
um, pneumothorax, and then for abdominal pain, common ones you want to rule out is uh, cholecystitis or um, cholangitis, which is a bit more scary, and appendicitis is a common one, as well as if it's a, a female um, of reproductive age, then ectopic pregnancy. Um, so different different varieties, um, different differential diagnoses to consider, and you want to rule out the, the big scary ones, but also if it's not that, reassure them and make sure they have proper follow-up. So it sounds like there's a variety of uh, different things that patients can come in with. Um, what are uh, procedures that you can perform? Um, what's in your repository of skill sets in your toolbox? Yes, um, I am smiling because I really enjoy uh, the procedures that we get to do in Emerge. I really like suturing, so um, we get lacerations and uh, PAs really help with suturing and um, handling that aspect of uh, patient care. And um, casting, so for the different fractures, whether it be like an ankle fracture or um, a wrist fracture, we can help with casting and this could be done under sedation because there's reduction being done before you cast or just in the rapid assessment zone. So uh, draining abscesses and uh, lastly irrigation of the ear. I think that's a very common and probably the most rewarding because patients come in with you know pain or I can't hear at all and then you just flush their ear out and they're like super thankful. Um, and those are the common ones I would say and there are a few other ones like um, draining a paronychia so like um, that would still kind of fall under IND. Um, foreign body removal is a common one so one I can think of is removing like a, the backing of an earring from someone's earlobe after months um, or uh, removing something from the, the foot after they stepped on it or uh, ingrown toenail removal of that and taking care of that so much variety and sometimes it's like I can't think of it because it's unique but anything that kind of walks through the door you just um, try to improvise and figure out a way to help the patient out and make sure they have proper follow-up. So what kind of patients uh, are you seeing or treating in, um, in the eMERGE? Uh, so there's a lot of variety in terms of the patients we see in eMERGE. So it could be uh, pediatrics, so like a few months old, or um, geriatrics who can be like even 100 years old. So lots of variety in age. Um, another factor is the cultural background. So at the particular location I work at, um, speaking Tamil really helps with the patient population and addressing language barriers. So I find that that helps me connect with patients um, because you see this like um, relief where the patient like the patient knows that I speak the same language so they're not as nervous about the visit and they can really tell me what's going on instead of um, even that additional step of calling a family member um, it saves that and it also provides the reassurance for the patient care so lots of variety in age cultural background socioeconomic status um, especially in their merge and um, and that is in addition to the variety of cases and uh, presentations we see and what can a patient expect if they're going to be seen by a PA? Yeah, so I think the first thing that comes to mind is that a patient can expect two great minds to work on their patient visit. So um, when the PA, the PA walks in and starts the visit, taking the history and doing the appropriate physical exam, they go back and they discuss the case with the supervising physician. And that's where the collaborative aspect of discussing what is happening and what could be the, like, the differentials to consider and differential diagnoses to consider and next steps in terms of investigations to order and management options. Um, so I think it is a win-win in that um, the PA works collaboratively to share the workload with the physician and the um, the patient actually sees the PA but also the supervising physician and gets input from both sides to provide them with the best care possible. You were a new grad that had been hired onto the emergency department. What did your orientation look like? How did they prepare you to, to work as a PA? Yeah, no, that's a great question because I was very lucky to be um, joining a team of PAs who were already well established at the um, institution that I was working at. So I got about one month to help transition into or orient into my role and this involved tagging along with one of the senior PAs and seeing how things are done in the department but also learning their preferences and um, everyone kind of had one mentor and I really liked the, the teaching style of my mentor where it was kind of um, you know just 
just doing it and learning and then getting feedback from her as well as when I present to the MDs like she was kind of supportive but also letting me learn from the MDs as well so there were different teaching styles um, other senior PAs were very supportive and they would ask you what your comfort level was but I think that that team brain team based approach um, with the PA supporting you but also the MDs understanding that you're just um, onboarding was very supportive and um, we also had additional sessions. So we had a casting workshop, we had um, a teaching workshop where we covered like common presentations in the emerge and what your approach would be for those cases. And um, we also had an ultrasound workshop, which was something that I really enjoyed as well because at uh, where, where I work, um, POCUS, which is point of care ultrasound, is, very, um, is a commonly used tool at the bedside. So that's something that PAs are involved in and something we got exposure to so we know when we can use that. Um, when a patient presents with different complaints like appendicitis or even like a ruptured ectopic pregnancy, you want to do a bedside ultrasound and see if you have to expedite their care. How did PA school prepare you for the job that you're in now? Yeah, I think that's a great question because that's something that I always um, take time to reflect on. Um, even though PA school is only two years, uh, you do learn a lot and I think even your first year in practice, um, especially in emergency medicine, the steep learning curve, it's almost like drinking from a fire hose. So um, PA school prepares you for that um, steep learning curve and being that absorbing sponge, especially as a new grad PA. I think that depending on where you did your rotation, so I did a few rotations up north and then a lot in the, the GTA, the greater Toronto area. So um, that gave me exposure to specific patient population and specific types of cases. But um, where I work now, it's different patient population and you're always, adapting to who you're working with in terms of your your colleagues but also the patient and uh, medicine is you know it's a lifelong learning process so PA school prepared me but I think that you continue to learn on the job and I think that the U of T curriculum definitely did give me the the foundation to kind of build off of um, into practice. There are many physicians that have never had exposure to PA mm -hmm. and they're not really sure what to expect when working with one. So some say that it's like working with a resident or a fellow that never leaves your rotation. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that assessment or how would you explain to a physician what it's like to work with a PA if they've never had exposure before? So yeah, I think that um, comparison to residents that never leave is a good um, example or analogy. However, I think that I always um, hear that PAs extend physician services. So. It's funny, I actually heard from one of my supervising talks that he was asked if he was a PA last time. So it's, it's amazing to see the progress that PAs have made in Canada, especially the ones at this location over the past few years, where um, the way that the doctor kind of takes care of a patient case, PAs have been doing something similar so that it's almost um, synonymous. That is not to say that it is synonymous title-wise, but our scope of practice do reflect that of our supervising physicians. So whether it's being a resident or whether it's being um, you know, a physician extender, I think that PAs um, can kind of serve that versi versatile role in filling in um, different, different aspects of care. What is PA scope of practice? We mention that word a lot, but what, is, what yeah. does that actually mean? Yeah, so PA scope of practice, um, usually we say mirrors that of their supervising physician. In the emergency department, um, depending on the doc you work with and depending on what's needed on that particular day, um, a PA could be doing a lot of procedures or um, helping out with doing the history and physical exams and getting the patient visit started. So I have had days where um, I'm on a night shift and from 6, 6 p.m. to about 11 um, p.m. I'll be seeing patients, kind of reviewing the patient cases and then making sure their investigations are there, following up on that, um, and then management options and discharge. So there was one day where I came back from my dinner break and I actually spent most of my time in the rapid assessment zone, which is RAS and I saw I think about nine lacerations and took care of that while the doctor was in the resuscitation um, area and um, the acute care area of uh, emergency department and seeing those patients. So I think based on what's needed in the department your your role and your scope of practice will vary but the beauty of um, being in emergency medicine is that your scope of practice can has a potential to keep kind of broadening and expanding and it's really up to you as the PA to kind of find those opportunities to kind of add to your toolbox and you know learn where you can help out and help streamline patient flow. Excellent. Um, what is the PAMD relationship like? How do you work with um, the 50 different positions that you work with? 
Yeah, um, it is very great. <laughs> I think that um, the PAs who uh, joined at this uh, location like years ago have really established the PA role very well. Um, it really depends on the supervising physician. So when you start off, you're a bit more, um, there's a bit more guidance in terms of learning their preferences, but also, you know, you gaining that trust with that supervising physician. But as time goes on and you're able to kind of, um, you know, show them your thought process and how you kind of think through cases, you're able to to build a bit more um, autonomy and that will vary based on, again based on the supervising physician and the nature of the case so um, I think that uh, for example when I started if I sutured a patient I would ask the physician to check it um, to make sure that they're happy with it and then as time goes on they're happy with you suturing providing discharge instructions they would have started the visit and then just stepping in and saying hey like any questions and everything is good okay you're good to go just you know follow up in seven to ten days to get your sutures removed and then reviewing their signs of infections to look out for um, and then sometimes you wouldn't even um, you, when you do the history and physical and the page uh, the supervising physicians in recess taking care of a patient you would actually get the order started because at that point you're a bit more comfortable with the physician you know their preferences so you would order certain things and um, if you had a question about something you would hold off on that until they come back from recess and then you can add that on as an add-on test but there's different levels and it depends on the physician but also the the nature of the case and i did say like working with so many docs there's an opportunity to learn but there's also this um, this other side to it where you have to kind of keep adapting uh, based on their preferences and uh, depending on who you're presenting to kind of tweaking what um, you would propose as the next steps but I think you also as you kind of continue to grow and become an experienced PA yourself you start um, building your own preference which is one of the things that my mentor kind of told me about um, when I was orienting through the job they're like you'll learn the physician's preference but then you start kind of figuring out what your preferences are when you propose and then you this actually um, sparks discussion so you're like okay so this is why I think we should do this or this is why I think this could be appropriate next steps and then the physicians like oh why do you think that you would have that discussion um, and apart from the physicians and PAs uh, that you work with in the department uh, what other healthcare providers are you also interacting with in the ED and what is that like um, so I think the beauty of Emerge is that we work collaboratively. So um, the interprofessional healthcare team is very big in the Emerge. I work with nurses, I work with ward clerks, respiratory therapists, um, social workers, um, and different consultants, whether this is like general surgeons, um, orthopedic surgeons, or even crisis, which is the team for psych. Um, psych. And, um, I can't even like there's probably way more but I think the because we're on front line and we have the opportunity to um, refer and get opinions from different consultants there's a there's the opportunity to work with multiple um, allied health professionals and you started your PA career during the pandemic um, so what impact do you think that has had on uh, whether that was you or the department uh, what has that been like so in my first few months, I did not know what most of my colleagues look like. I had to identify them basically by their eyes and uh, maybe their scrub cap, but um, the PPE, so um, we had to wear scrub caps, masks and 95s, um, you know, face shield and a lot of different, um, a lot of PPE, which um, I think took away that personal touch in terms of uh, orienting myself to the Emerge team. But regardless, I was still able to kind of um, bond with the, the team and um, get to know, you know everyone and their personalities. And I think that was one, one aspect of how the pandemic impacted my um, transition into, into my new role. So we saw a lot of presentations with patients having sore throat, chest pain, shortness of breath, and making sure that it was not COVID. But after um, we started vaccinating and we started seeing cases drop, uh, more patients started presenting with um, abdominal pain that has been going on for uh, many months that they didn't come in for earlier on because of the pandemic and they didn't want to come in to the eMERGE. So we started seeing more of those patients and the variety actually started um, broadening um, as the COVID cases started going down. So it's still something that we keep in our differential, you know, always try to rule out COVID, but thankful for vaccination and thankful for, um, you know, the opportunity for people to somewhat return back to their uh, normal lives, which also brings in the, um, the variety of cases into the eMERGE. Um, for PA students, what tips would you have uh, for them to excel uh, on a rotation? 
Yeah, I think emergency medicine is probably one of the uh, more intimidating uh, rotations to do in the clerkship year. I think that going in with an open mind and trying to always challenge yourself, so some of the, you'll have a variety of patient cases to choose from. Try your best not to, you know, choose the case that is very comfortable, you know, you're familiar with, you're more comfortable taking the history and performing physical exam and try to um, always find the case that's going to challenge you and is going to um, give you new exposure and always use the opportunity to kind of learn from other um, uh, preceptors. So um, whether that's your own preceptor, so your PA preceptor or an MD preceptor, but also whoever else you're working with. So getting an idea of what it's like um, in terms of the nurse's scope of practice in the eMERGE and the clerk's role and the different roles and how that works together and the dynamic in the department, I think will really help you prepare um, to see how the PA role can fit in and if that's something that you see yourself in down the line. And lastly, I would say read around cases. So you're gonna see a lot of uh, variety. So um, if one patient case kind of stands out to you, go home and read about that case uh, in terms of like, you know, what was the patient's presentation like? What are the differentials I should have considered? And what should I propose in terms of next steps? So that if a similar case comes around the next time, then you know what to do and, um, and that, case might have its own twist and you could probably read around that as well, but that continuously reading around um, cases and continuing to add to your toolbox, um, especially during clerkship rotation, will really help you in the, down the line. And how did you prepare for your end of rotation exam for eMERGE? I would say that's one of the things I did. So I read around the cases and I would make notes of, um, so I would read the blueprint of the end of rotation exams. And then uh, if I encountered a patient case, then make notes. And then if I didn't, then I would kind of um, read around that at home when I studied and also do a lot of practice questions. So these practice questions were clinical vignettes. So they would give you a situation and then they would ask you a follow-up question. And that I think prepared me in terms of the testing style for uh, ERE's, which is end of rotation exams. What resources have you found helpful in your first year of practice to get you oriented to emergency medicine? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question because um, we do use up to date a lot in practice. So sometimes when you're stumped, you kind of look it up. Um, I think a lot of the algorithms that you see on that or even patient education material that you can provide patients and um, reading around cases. So whether that be using up to date or talking to a colleague about it and see like you know what their interaction or what their experience has been like with a case that may have been similar um, or that they may have encountered previously. Um, and also MRAP, so EMRAP, I'm not sure what it stands for, but it is a very good resource. So I, I'm using that for CME purposes, which is continuing medical education credits, which we're um, expected to complete as uh, working professionals now, but also just to kind of keep in touch with the different, um, the different up-to-date information, evidence-based medicine um, guidelines in emergency medicine, as well as colleagues. Colleagues are always uh, great, especially the very um, experienced supervising physicians who kind of learned as they went through their years of practice and are willing to teach. What would your general advice be approach to looking for employment Dr. PA school? Yeah, um, crazy to think that last year this time I was going through the same process and um, I did a lot of self-reflection. I think that's my key um, takeaway from that process. So lots of self-reflection in terms of where you see yourself down the line, whether it's like, you know, a few years down the line and um, looking at your career as a whole. Lots of pressure to think about it, but you want to see what specialties interest you, what will give you a good foundation, um, what type of environment you want to work in, whether it's hospital or a clinic, um, outpatient clinic environment. Um, the the number of team members you want to work with. So for example, an, a clinic you'll have fewer docs, um, but it's a bit more niche. And then in a hospital there are more docs um, and it's a bit more broad, but then um, for some reason I thought that that would be kind of like your there's a lot of people and it's a uh, it's um, broad, but then it's a big family basically. So we all work together. So. Um, Reflect on what you want in terms of the team you work with, the environment, the specialty, as well as even the geographic location and uh, what you want career-wise. And I think all those factors will point you in the right direction in terms of choosing a position. Um, and one last tip I would say is keeping your options open. By keep your options open, I mean that don't limit yourself at an early stage when you're applying for jobs. So for me personally, I always knew ortho was um, on the list for me because of my background in kinesiology. But I always had this question in the back of my mind if I should consider general medicine to start off. 
and build a strong foundation in that to kickstart my um, PA career. So I did um, apply to family medicine and emergency medicine, which was not something that I thought of earlier. But based on my reflection, I was like, okay, so if I want to keep my options open and kind of have that background knowledge um, and that opportunity to consolidate what I learned in PA school um, right after graduating, then um, it will help me down the line, even if I transition into specialty care. What is the job market like for new grads? Um, are there opportunities for employment? Just reflecting back to last year compared to this year, I think that it is safe to say that there are more jobs than PAs. So um, I don't know if this is accurate statistically, but based on the opportunities I saw being a new grad and applying um, to positions last year compared to this year, I feel like more supervising physicians are um, aware of the PA role and want to hire more PAs. I think that uh, PAs have made a huge impact during the pandemic, which really advocated for our role. And as a result, um, we have more docs who want PAs on board to avoid burnout, share the workload, and kind of take care of the um, patient cases and the workload post-pandemic, if we're there yet. So um, I think that it has really, the pandemic, and one of the silver linings is that it has helped advocate for the PA role. PAs have really proven their um, impact in patient care and in Canadian healthcare system um, throughout the past couple of years. And um, I think the future is bright for PA. So I don't think that um, pre-PAs or PA students have to worry too much about uh, employment opportunities. And one thing that one of the supervising physicians I work with said is, if there isn't an opportunity, you can create an opportunity. Um, you can, you know, PAs have made um, made an impact in patient care, and if there's an opportunity for you to create a new job, then we have trailblazers like yourself and um, other mentors to reach out to to make that happen. And um, that's also an option. Are you happy with your decision to become a PA? Most definitely. I am actually grateful to be where I am. Um, this is uh, beyond what I had hoped for. I, um, you know, when I found the PA profession, I, I always say this, you know, I was, I was like, this is, this can't be real. This sounds too good to be true, but um, it really is. A very, um, very uh, rewarding career. It is, a, it is too good to be true. And I think um, the beauty of practicing in Canada is that you see the profession grow. Even um, from when I was a pre-PA a few years back till now, uh, the profession has grown. We have more PAs joining the community and more, PA, you know, more people interested in pursuing it as a profession. Um, and I think that just shows that there's a lot of potential for this profession. And um, it's, it's something that I'm grateful for to be uh, pra being a practicing PA just a few years after um, deciding on this career path. And what specific things do you find rewarding? What do you enjoy about being a PA? What I find very rewarding about the PA role is that you have the opportunity to work collaboratively, which gives you the um, option of learning new skills and um, asking questions, uh, whether it's your MD colleagues or your PA colleagues, and um, keep adding to your toolbox. And I always make this uh, reference of adding to your toolbox because the PA profession is very versatile and you can always find ways to kind of contribute to streamlining patient flow and helping out your colleagues in terms of sharing workload and um, and the mix of different things you can do so whether it be procedures and um, or even seeing patients and hearing their stories um, and I'm just thinking back to a few days ago where I was suturing a big laceration in a senior patient and um, she was sharing like her story about how she met her husband who was there helping during the patient visit and just hearing those stories while you're doing those procedures and having that opportunity to um, you know, uh, dis discuss these things with patients, having a role in preventative medicine, which is something that I was passionate about as a pre-PA and I still tr try to counsel patients on, um, are one of like a few of the many things that I find rewarding in the PA role. Thank you, Anne, for this opportunity. I think it's always nice to reflect on your journey once in a while. And the last time I was a PA student, this time I'm grateful to be a working PA. I want to thank you all for watching um, and listening to my journey so far. And if you guys are interested in what my last two years were like and um, what my life as an emergency medicine PA is like, then you can feel free to follow me on Instagram. Um, my Insta handle is arthi.pa. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.